Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 53rd tutorial in this course. In this tutorial, we are going to continue our discussion on arrays and I'm going to talk about a few things about arrays that I missed in the last few tutorials. Right, so using code blocks, I've saved a file and I've given it the name array underscore misc that's supposed to be short form for miscellaneous dot c and on line one in this file, I have the stdio.h header file and then I have the main function and some lines of code between the main function. Right, so the first thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, this. If suppose you do not know in advance how many elements your array is going to store, then in that case, how would you decide what value you have to put between the square brackets while declaring your array? Well, C makes this simple for you. So if you don't know in advance how many values your array is going to store, well, you don't have to put in any value between the brackets. You can leave the brackets empty. Right, so in the main function on line 4, I have declared an integer. It's called i. And this variable I'm going to use as the control variable for the for loop for accessing the elements in the ARR array, which is declared and initialized on line 5. And when you use this method, that is when you do not provide any value between the square brackets, you have to use the curly braces method of, uh, you know, for initializing your array, right? So the name of the array is ARR and it's a float type. So all the values in it uh, will be floats as well. And Currently, it has four values, right? So I haven't typed in four here, but C would automatically determine how many elements the array is going to hold. And uh, the first one has, uh, the first element is going to get the value 5.45. The second one is going to get 20.62. Third one, 18.57. And fourth one is going to get 19.00, right? And then I have the for statement on line six. And uh, of course, we'll have to start with the zero as the value for I because the index of the first element is zero. And uh, since there are four values in the array currently, we've initialized it with four values, we have to loop till uh, three, right? So you have to go from zero to three. And uh, then in the body of the for loop, I have one printf statement that's going to display the values that are stored in the ARR array, right? So let me run the program and show you guys the output. So you see that I have, uh, four statements of output in the output window and uh, you know each value that's stored in the ARR array is displayed on screen. This was one thing that I wanted to talk about. The other thing that I wanted to talk about uh, is this. If suppose you want to change one value out of the four values in the array, then you can either do that uh, at the top here that is on line five. Suppose if I want to change the value stored in the third element from 18.57 to 25.45, right? So I can remove 18.57 from here and I can type in 25.45, but that's, if suppose I do not want to do this, if suppose I want the initialization statement to stay intact, but I want to change the value of just the third element somewhere down the line in the program, right? So I'll change this back to 18.57. And what I'll do is on a new line, I'm going to type in the name of the array, which is ARR, then the index of the third element which is two in square brackets and then I use the assignment operator and type in the new value right so if I want to give 25.45 then uh, I can type that and I put a semicolon to terminate the statement and save the file when I click on build and run you see that I get new output this time and uh, the third element has the value 25.45 instead of 18.57 right so you do not have to change the value in the initialization statement if you want to you know let the statement be the way it is like sometimes you would want that to happen then uh, you can let it be that way and you can change the value in this way so this is something that we have not seen uh, thus far that's why i talked about it and uh, you know the first thing that we discussed that you should not put the um, you know number of elements within the square brackets if you're not sure about how many elements your array is going to have that's a very important thing and if you you know get to develop big applications and it's certainly something that you should keep in mind because you know if you put in any value here like suppose if i would have put 10 or 15 or 20 or 100 and if i would have just given four values to the array then the array would have still had the memory that would be required to store five or you know 15 or 20 or as many elements as you specify in the square brackets you know it would get that much memory right so it would unnecessarily consume memory in your system now these days people are not 
you know, too bothered about memory constraints because you know, memory is cheap these days, so you can buy memory easily and very cheaply. But you know, earlier people were very particular about such things, and it's a good habit to have actually. You, know, you should, uh, as a programmer, try to save as much memory as you can, even if you get to save a few bytes. Right. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope this was informative and fun for you. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one in which we we'll discuss something interesting again. Probably we're going to talk about arrays a little more. And uh, thank you so much for watching this. And please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already. And I'll see you soon.